Greetings, my name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. This evening we have an exemplary uh, program. We have two exemplary guests uh, to tell us about uh, jazz music. Uh, we have Mr. Charles R. Heath IV. Um, he's a drummer and educator, producer, and musician. And we also have, uh, to his left, um, uh, Ms. Whitley Butler. Uh, she's the uh, senior at Elmhurst College, uh, majoring in business and music. Greetings, folks. How are you, Dr. Hi, Brooks? How are you, sir? We, we're very happy that you're taking time from your business schedule to be with us as I identified you to our listening audience. By the way, Lake County is approximately, oh, 750 uh, to 800,000 people. And, um, and we air at 7 o'clock every Thursday evening on Channel 17. So we had a, we are happy to have this opportunity to let Lake County know just who you are and what jazz is all about. Absolutely. Now, first of all, I want you to tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and professional background. I could give uh, <coughs> um, myself, uh, but uh, <coughs> If I were to tell all about you, mm -hmm. uh, then the audience, uh, they, they, they wouldn't need, I don't, wouldn't need a guest. <laughs> <You laughs> That's know? true. But since I have you as a guest, I want you to tell us as much as you would like us to know about your personal professional background. Absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. We really appreciate it. Okay. Um, I graduated from Shaw University, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, it's an all-black uh, uh, Historical Black College, okay, and uh, proud graduate of that school. And uh, after graduating, I started teaching in Chicago Public Schools right mm -hmm. away. And I taught in Chicago Public Schools for ten years, oh. implementing uh, jazz bands, concert bands, uh, uh, say no to drugs parades, and uh, things of that nature. Doing fundraisers to uh, raise uh, money for kids to get instruments. Mm -hmm. And uh, after uh, teaching for about 10 years, Oprah Winfrey's uh, Color Purple gave me a call and they were interested in me uh, being the principal drummer for the Broadway uh, musical, The Color Purple. Mm -hmm. So I did that for two years and uh, after traveling with them for two years, I returned back to Chicago uh, and it was a great experience traveling coast to coast and meeting um, the likes of Quincy Jones and so many other music greats uh, while on the road. But returning back to Chicago, uh, I started my own jazz concert series, Jazzing on the South Side, uh, and that was in 2010, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we bring the best music to the South Side of Chicago uh, with the best musicians, uh, such as Willie Pickens, Corey Wilkes, D. Alexander, mm. uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, Shortly after me beginning my concert series, I got a phone call from the legendary pianist Ramsey Lewis. Mm. And uh, before Ramsey called me, a good friend of mine uh, by the name of Henry Johnson, who uh, has been Ramsey's guitarist since the late 1970s, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. gave me a call and said, well, Ramsey's looking for a drummer. Oh. And I said, wow, okay, who are you going to call? He said, well, he's going to call you. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, we'll see. So I didn't believe it. And uh, sure enough, um, a day or two went by. And to my surprise, Ramsey did call me, and he was very interested in uh, me being a part of his band. And I've been his drummer for the past four years, and it's been a pleasure. And uh, speaking of Ramsey, today is his birthday. Ah, yeah, he's okay. 79 years old today, so well, happy birthday to Ramsey. And still playing uh, as before, right? He's still Absolutely. traveling and so forth. Yeah. Absolutely. We yeah. just uh, returned uh, from a uh, tour in Seattle, Washington, uh, with the great uh, vocalist Philip Bailey of Earth, Wind & Fire, okay. uh, where we did a four-night uh, stint at uh, Jazz Alley in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing to mm -hmm. play with two legends, a jazz legend mm -hmm. as well as an R&B legend. Well, you know, that's quite extraordinary to be able to play with the, the world-renowned, right. you know, uh, <laughs> Ramsey Lewis. But how did you get involved with music? Music has always been in me. Um, 
my grandparents played, my uncles oh, and aunts played. Okay. Um, but it all derived from the church, just as jazz music. Uh, jazz derived from uh, Negro spirituals. Okay. And then from Negro spirituals, uh, the blues. Then from the blues, jazz came about. So it all started in the church for me. Um, my mom would sit by the drums in church. And when the drums started kicking, I started kicking. <laughs> um, and this is when she was carrying me, uh, oh. be before I was born. So uh, when the drums started kicking, I started kicking. When the drums stopped kicking, I stopped kicking. So she knew right away I was going to be a musician. I have something to do with music. Uh, she would put me on all the uh, church programs, mm -hmm. Easter programs, Christmas programs, and just let me showcase my talent. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, from there, they, they pushed me because they saw it was my desire and my passion. And I've just been doing it since I can remember. So mm -hmm. to this day, I'm still in it. You know, I'm really concerned because, you know, in the public schools, um, uh, they have, uh, when they get uh, to the point of cutting the budget, uh, the places that they go is music, uh, physical education, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, home economics and so forth like this. But these are v vital uh, parts of the educational program, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Music um, has all the com components, all the academic com components that help kids to get good grades. Uh, okay. It teaches discipline, uh, acquires focus. Um, so the reason they would take it out to school is beyond me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's what music did for me uh, because to read music, you have to do so many things at one time. For one single note, you have to know uh, what pitch it is on the instrument. You mm -hmm. have to know mm -hmm. where it is on the staff, whether it's on the line or on the space. You have to know how many beats it receives. You have to play in tune. Uh, so it's, it's so many things going on at one time. You're adding, subtracting, dividing, you're doing it all, okay. all, at, all at once. So it, it also teaches comprehension and it teaches harmony. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. teaches not only how to work as an individual, but it also teaches how to work together as a unit because you can't be a band with just one person or then it would be a solo. So. <laughs> It's, it's very important that we bring the music back and that we keep music alive. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very unfortunate that we have people that's ahead of our educational system, you know, that are uh, not aware of how important, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, things are in the, in the school. And like I mentioned about the music, home economics, phys physical education, and so mm -hmm. forth, you know. But these are top people. In, in, in our system, the one that controls the budget. Mm -hmm. Now, I went, um, oh, uh, I guess two years in college, and they needed a bass drummer, and they looked at me. <laughs> Is <laughs> so, that right? <laughs> yeah. So I played bass drum for uh, two years. The two years, my two years in college. Wow. And then I had no musical background, but the beat, like you say, you were kicking even before you were born. That's you know. right. But I, I, I kept beating, I know. You know, as a matter of fact, since we're talking about, if you don't mind here for a minute here, sure. uh, we have um, uh, Ms. Whitley Butler, uh, she's a senior at M Amherst College, and, and Whitney, your major is music and business, right? Music business, vocal studies and music business at Amherst College. Okay, tell us about why you chose uh, music business. I chose music business because of the simple fact that I've been having music in my blood since the age of four. I've been singing since the age of four. Okay, another early. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> early on. My mama started me yay, yay, high, you know. <laughs> okay. I remember when she used to dress me up like Tina Turner and she'd have my stepbrothers at the time singing back up and I would be singing down here at the old Elks Mason uh, house and I would yeah. just be. 14th Street. Then. Yeah, 14th yeah. Street, yeah. right there off, there off 14th Street yeah. and I would just have the crowd going wild like, oh my God, she's so cute. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, re I really wanted to get like a big, hearty type of degree, you know. I mean, I've always dreamt about, you know, being in the forefront like Beyonce or Madonna or something like that. Okay. But at the same time, it's good for you to know the business side of things as well because a lot of these artists like Tony Braxton and TLC, they've gone bankrupt because of what they're, okay. what they're, 
music business partners and what their what the record labels have done to them and at the same time you don't want to go into the situation looking like a big dunce so mm -hmm. it's it's good to know where your where your money is coming from and where it's going and what to do next with that money because mm -hmm. it's owed to you you've been putting in the work you've been and not to mention you're doing something you love so why not you know um, I feel that I've made a great choice by being a music business major and I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah, this was your choice. Uh, yes. that, uh, and uh, your, your mother, what field is she in though? She was, I, I mentioned that because uh, uh, was you a graduate of Tots and Tyler's daycare center? Yes, I was. Oh God. And, oh. <laughs> yes. and I remember your mother used to, she worked in Chicago I think and yeah. she used to drop come late every day picking you up and we, we knew that there was something in store for you in the future <laughs> so we enjoyed staying that extra five or ten minutes oh, to her to pick you up, you. You know. <laughs> but but um, what field is she in is she music to her? oh no she's 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 a big financial person she's an IRS agent she's been that for the past 20 to 5 25 to 30 years of her life and oh. she's been going strong for as long as I can remember. I mean, when I was even in her womb, you know. Okay. Um, she is she is a very motivational person. She's stern but loving. Okay. You know, she she's been pushing me, like I said, since day one. And I wouldn't God couldn't give me a better mother. I mean, I, I thank God for her every day. So it's like it's not just Mother's Day, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's Mother's <laughs> and, 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 the, and, the, and the, the whole family. Of, He's been giving me. He's given me a beautiful family at that. That's been supportive since day one as well. So okay. I wouldn't trade that for anything as well. I mean, they've been pushing me through all my musical endeavors, all my academic endeavors, and uh, because of them and God mainly, I'm I'm here today, <laughs> sitting with you fine folks. So hey, I know I'm a close uh, friend of your grandfather too. Yeah. Cl mm -hmm. on, on, on a Clary. On a Clary. Is it your grandfather? Yeah, he, he just passed. Right, right. A year he, before. Yes. Yeah. He was a great man, a uh, veteran, uh, had many obstacles and goals that he had also, you know, accomplished in life as well. And we love him dearly and we miss him dearly. He, he was the daddy of everybody, so <laughs> right, just like right, you guys right. know. So, right, right. I mean, that was another big influence in my life as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, what type of uh, music uh, did you, you sing? Uh, a bit of gospel and, and R&B, anything that basically my, my voice curves to. I mean, in school, we've we sung both gospel and R&B as well, but usually classical pieces and hymnal pieces and whatnot from different, you know, different uh, time eras and frames and whatnot, you know, just to give tribute to the music, the great music that's come before our time, you know. And um, that's been a that's been a joy to do that ever since, you know, grade school all the way to college. So. I've been singing since what? Since maybe the third or fourth grade, wow. Old Plain School over there yes, in Gurney. Yes. And now I'm here in Elmhurst College and I've been singing with the great Sue Moninger, that's our choir director. She's like a mother. She's like she's so spasmatic, but she's she's she does that for a reason and she's she's great with everything she does. And mm -hmm. I've been surrounded by a lot of great musicians within my five years of college. And uh, that I also wouldn't trade for anything as well. So I've learned a lot, you know, mm -hmm. being a student there at CLC and Elmhurst College, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Heath, do you have um, guest singers? Uh, is it all uh, uh, just instrumental? Oh, absolutely, definitely. Uh, we always have uh, the best uh, singers. As I said before, uh, D. Alexander, who will be uh, performing at uh, Symphony Center uh, this, uh, I want to say this summer. Mm. or this fall. Uh, she's on the schedule to perform there, but she was one of the first performers we had at Jazzin on the South Side when we first started mm -hmm. uh, four years ago. And um, coming this um, summer, we will feature uh, the great vocalist, Miss uh, Frida Lee. Mm. And then um, we're also uh, bringing in an international vocalist this Sunday for our uh, Ken Chaney Scholarship Benefit Concert. Uh, featuring the great Nina Freeline, who is an international uh, vocalist, jazz vocalist, six-time Grammy nominated, um, just an amazing person, and just gives an amazing show, so you don't want to miss that. They say we are, and I was there with Ramsey Lewis. Well, actually, no, it's uh, going to be with her band, uh, featuring uh, Henry Johnson on guitar, uh, Josh Ramos on bass, 
and myself on drums, and she's bringing her uh, musical director in from New York, Mickey Hayama, on piano. Lisa, this is going to be uh, this this Sunday. That's right. We are hosting the Ken Cheney Scholarship Concert, where we're sending uh, two young jazz musicians to jazz camp and helping with their college tuition. Um, and we're also going to implement a mentorship program at our concert series that we do weekly. And we're going to make our concert series free for the entire summer. So it's a lot going on um, as far as the proceeds mm -hmm. uh, that, that we will gain from the benefit concert this Sunday. And we would love for everybody to attend do and you help have us. A, do you have a graphic that you'd like to show? Actually. I do have a graphic that I would like to show. You just happen to have one, huh? I just happen to have one, but unfortunately, I think someone took it. Oh. But you always have a spare, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this, this is what we have. This is the Ken Cheney Scholarship Concert uh, that's going to take place at DuSable Museum, 740 East 56th uh, Place in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, you don't want to miss it if you would like more information. You can visit www.charlesheathpresents.com uh, to purchase tickets uh, and more information on who Ken Cheney was. And uh, speaking of Ken Cheney, he um, was my mentor. And Ken, uh, he, he's a great musician, very passionate, and he was involved with the Jazz Institute of Chicago. Um, he was uh, the founder of the Jazz Links program, which uh, encourages young people to continue to play jazz music and just to continue Ken's legacy he passed away about a year ago mm -hmm. and to continue Ken's legacy um, I wanted to do something to uh, just continue uh, forever even after I'm gone just, at, just as Ken did okay. uh, for me so we're sending kids to uh, college helping with their college tuition and helping them get to jazz camp and uh, implementing a mentorship program and just bringing jazz music back into the communities uh, because jazz isn't the popular music of today, but it's America's most precious treasure and it's America's only true art form um, that was created by African Americans. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was <coughs> hoping that we could get uh, that information on the screen, uh, but um, you have the only uh, uh, copy there, so I don't know how, just in case the people didn't get a chance to see that, it's June the 1st, um, which is uh, Sunday. The Sunday, at yes. At the Chicago uh, DuSable uh, Museum. DuSable Museum, right. And that's uh, located where? Uh, 740 East 56th Place. Mm -hmm. And uh, two shows, 3.30 p.m. and a 6 p.m. show. Okay, okay. Fantastic. Well, we can talk about that uh, sometime later uh, during the show. But I would like for, uh, you know, we had talked about uh, uh, Whitley Butler um, mm. uh, singing, and uh, I wonder if you can encourage her to uh, <laughs> just give us a number of uh, absolutely from, from her repertoire. Sure, sure, absolutely. I've heard Whitley sing uh, <laughs> several times, and she blows me away each and every time. So. Uh, for the listening, uh, the viewing audience, you are in for a treat this afternoon. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Miss Whitley Butler. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, this song is called "If I Own Today" by Shana Steele, and this is one of the great pieces that we sung at our concert choir at Elmhurst College. And I love this piece to death. And I'm just going to sing the solo part. Okay. I'm walking towards nothing on this desolate road. I'm searching for comfort, a place to call my own. I'm scared where I'm heading, when will this fear subside? When will I finally answer the questions in my mind? Like why the sky is blue and why my heart's the same and what I'm so afraid of 
if I own today. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you very, very much, yeah. Ronald Will. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Appreciate that very much. We, y y you know, uh, music, you mentioned you are a mentor. You have devoted your, your life to really uh, helping other youngsters. Yes. Uh, but tell us about your, your mentorship again. I think you, you mentioned it. Uh, Absolutely. Um, in the past, as I said before, I've taught in Chicago public schools for a total of 10 years. Okay. And currently, I'm contracting schools that don't have music programs. Oh, so okay. I go into okay. schools and I basically teach um, kids uh, in grades kindergarten through 12th grade how to read music. Uh, so um, more or less general music is what I teach the uh, kids. And it guides them in a the direction of um, one wanting to inquire more about live inst instrumentation because you don't see too many instruments on TV anymore as we did um, coming up. And, uh, you know, uh, even in the cartoons, mm -hmm. Tom and Jerry, you would see Tom playing something with the orchestra or just music was all around us. Mm -hmm. and, and now the music has been tainted, um, not all music, but there is, um, a lot of bad music out there, okay. unfortunately. It's not, um, it's not uh, genuine. Mm -hmm. I should say mm -hmm. everything is sampled. Mm -hmm. um, but what I do is I go into schools, I teach kids how to read music, and uh, they want to learn more about how to get into the music business, how they can play instruments. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage them and tell them, uh, you know, there are only so many basketball players that can be on a basketball team, only so, more, so many football players okay. that can play. Uh, but if you get in a marching band, it's 100, 200 members. So okay. your chances of getting a scholarship to college can be a lot greater than uh, possibly playing a sport or something like that. But um, that's, that's basically what I do. I just encourage um, kids to use the other side of their brain, and that's what music does. It wakes up the other side of the brain that's not tapped into mm -hmm. so much. So that's, that's my mentorship uh, contribution to uh, society. And um, just bringing live concerts back. Uh, it's not a, live mu not a lot of live music um, in communities anymore as well. So I'm, I'm sure you can attest to this, but when you were coming up, there was live music everywhere. Okay. Uh, but now you have to search and dig for some good live music. So I just want to bring that back and just mm -hmm. let kids know there's another way that you can make a living. Uh, and even if you don't make a living through music, it can serve as a vehicle to get to where you want to go. Um, the scholarship in music can help you become the chemist you want to be. Uh, help you become the lawyer you mm -hmm. desire to be. Mm -hmm. But just getting to college is what I want to help kids do. Okay. So music can be the vehicle for that. You know, this is a great dedication on your part, too, because <coughs> you provide weekly a mentorship program, right? I do. I do. Every week. Um, I've been doing it for the past four years, every Wednesday. We started mm -hmm. at the Regal Theater. Okay. Um, and that, that was an amazing, amazing um, uh, start for us because it's legendary. Uh, Miles Davis has performed there, Louis Armstrong, Billie Holiday, um, all of the jazz greats have come through Chicago and performed at the Regal Theater. But after um, them closing uh, about f three and a half years ago, we stayed there for about six months and then they had to close due to um, uh, some issues that was going on there. Um, we moved to the ETA Theater, mm -hmm. which is um, located on the south side of Chicago as well. And now they're under renovation, so they will be reopening, so we had to relocate again. So um, I'm hopping, but I'm not stopping. Okay. So uh, although we've seen uh, some, some stumbling blocks, but we continue to bring live music every Wednesday. Um, and currently we're at 8020 South Chicago. Avenue, um, I'm sorry, 8151 South Chicago Avenue, mm -hmm. and we'll be there this Wednesday featuring um, 
Miles Davis's <laughs> former musical di musical director Robert Irvin III in celebration of uh, Miles Davis's birthday. Mm. So uh, that's going to be an amazing <coughs> concert uh, this Wednesday at uh, 8151 South Chicago at Global Girl Studio. Is Miles Davis still living? No, Miles passed back in the early 90s. I mentioned it because he, he's from East St. Louis. That's right. You he's know, from Illinois. My, my hometown. And right across the river was uh, um, the, uh, my, uh, <laughs> the one you play the drummer, uh, Miles, Miles Davis. Oh, okay. Right? My, no, Miles no. Trumpet? Yeah. The trumpet player, Miles Davis. No, no, the, um, oh boy, you got the, a moment here. No, the one that you uh, played drum for. Oh, Ramsey. Ramsey Lewis. Ramsey's from Ramsey Chicago, Lewis. right, that's right. Oh, he's Chicago. Yeah, Ramsey's well, from to, Chicago. I'm trying to get him from St. Louis, <laughs> too, you know. But yeah, Miles, Miles Davis is uh, from that, you know. Right. Now, uh, now, you off also, summer weekly jazz concert series you have there, too, I guess you, and is that free to the public? Uh, well, this last one is going to be ten dollars. Um, but starting in June, proceeds from the uh, concert we're uh, doing this Sunday mm -hmm. at Dusabo will um, enable us to make our concert series free for the entire summer. Wow! And that's going to take <coughs> place at 8020 South King Drive, starting in June, the first Wednesday in June, June 4th. And that concert is going to feature. Uh, the great pianist uh, Willie Pickens oh. and his trio. So Willie is a great, great pianist, uh, jazz pianist and jazz legend within his own rights. So he's going to be performing and it's going to be free. You mm -hmm. can't beat it. We're, we're having all the Chicago greats such as uh, Frida Lee, as I said before, great vocalist sings with the uh, Chicago Jazz Ensemble and uh, Ferez Whitted, who is the uh, nephew of uh, great trombonist Slide, Slide Hampton. Mm. And uh, then we have an upcoming uh, musician, Irvin Pierce, uh, who's just recently uh, graduated from high school, great mm -hmm. tenor saxophonist, mm -hmm. and puts me in the mind of uh, John Coltrane. Okay. So all these concerts for the entire summer, June, July, August, they will all be free uh, if we can get a nice showing at DuSable Museum, as well as uh, help these young kids go to school and help them with their college tuition. Mm -hmm. So we need people to come out and support. Now, <clears throat> now you mentioned the support. There are several uh, sponsorship packets too that's available to mm -hmm. ensure that this happens, right? Yes. So you know, tell us you have uh, Ken Cheney sponsorship package, um, the Ramsey Lewis sponsorship package, Miles Davis sponsorship package, mm -hmm. and also Billy Holiday sponsorship package those are at different prices and they contain different um, absolutely uh, opportunities to it absolutely definitely for any of <coughs> the donors or sponsors uh, that are interested in uh, helping uh, what we're doing and have um, interest in helping young people mm -hmm. uh, for the different levels of sponsorship we will offer uh, musical services okay. for you to do your own fundraiser. So we will offer bands, um, uh, trios at no cost that would all be included into uh, your sponsorship as well as uh, advertising your business at our weekly concert series as well. Mm -hmm. So we, as you said, we have, uh, as Dr. Brooks said, we have the different uh, levels of sponsorship, the Ken Cheney sponsorship, uh, which is, um, ten thousand dollars and then mm -hmm. we have uh, the Ramsey Lewis sponsorship which is uh, seventy five hundred dollars and then it just decreases from there and you get a whole lot for that um, for for that amount of uh, support so uh, if you would like more information about that you can just uh, reach out to us at no, our uh, reach out to you yes <coughs> what is what uh, how can they reach to you you have a, you have a phone number or website I, and I do absolutely um, the website is uh, once again charlesheathpresents.com and okay. it has all the information about the Ken Cheney Scholarship concert. And then we also, uh, our phone number is 773-981-3135. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to really admire, and I mean this area can really admire what you're doing too. Uh, <coughs> I uh, graduated from East St. Louis Senior High School, the first African American to 
to mm -hmm. be graduated when schools integrated. Right. Uh, so what uh, what I did is started a scholarship uh, in, in memory of that uh, moment. That, that's what, that was even four years prior to uh, Brown versus Board. Wow. Brown, Brown, Brown versus Board in 1954. I graduated in 1950. If you <laughs> add the numbers up, you know. But uh, I wore four or five hundred dollar scholarships to graduating seniors and then uh, three one thousand dollar scholarships for one for North Chicago graduating seniors, Waukegan and Zion. Mm -hmm. So that's a total of five thousand dollars per year uh, that uh, and so the scholarships really make a difference. And so you have, op students have opportunities to really get involved. And, uh, and the sponsors um, have a great opportunity to ensure that Absolutely. the students get involved. Because who knows, uh, uh, there may be uh, hundreds of students, if they have the opportunity. That's right. You know, then they would become Ramsey Lewis's. Herbie Hancock, Miles, Day, uh, Miles uh, Davis, everybody. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. They right. could be the next. Uh, face of jazz, if you will. Right, right. And I just, this, the Heat School of Music, you say, started when, uh, you say you had brass, woodwind, percussion, piano, and string instruments, right? Uh, Absolutely. In the school. Absolutely. And uh, how long have you hit the school? Uh, I've been contracting schools since um, four years ago. Okay. So okay. since since about 2010, after mm -hmm. returning back from the Color Purple, mm -hmm. that's when the school began. And it has, it's funny, but that's how Jazzin' on the South Side, my concert series, began at the Regal because uh, the Regal Theater was interested in uh, integrating my music school oh. uh, into their uh, programs at the okay. theater. Okay. So they took me on a tour of the theater, and um, when they took me into the lobby, it's a beautiful, ornate lobby that reminds you of uh, the Persian marketplace. Mm. And it's, it's just gorgeous. And I, I said um, to the uh, <coughs> uh, producer, the executive director at the uh, Regal, I said, you should let me do jazz here. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, well, write it up and let me see what it looks like. So he loved it, and that's how Jazzing on the South Side started. But originally, um, my music school was, uh, began at the Regal Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Butler, who are some of the artists that you really admire that uh, you would consider role models that you would like to be? Hmm. <laughs> Artists. Because you I have a beautiful voice, and I'm yes, sure that uh, thank you. it's, thank it's you going so to be, you, you're going to be there to uh, <laughs> make it a mark that others may, may want to emulate to. Thank you so much. Well, for starters, my mom, she had me listening to a whole bunch of old stuff from like, <laughs> you know, Gladys Knight and the Pips, okay. you know, Anita Baker. I mm -hmm. even like the new school folks like, you know, Chrisette Michelle and, you know, even a little TLC here and there, whatever, because I am I have a alto-based voice. Mm -hmm. You know, I range from in between alto to a mezzo-soprano. Okay. Mezzo-soprano, oh Lord. <laughs> and I take their techniques and I take their ways of, of breath support into consideration. And not only have I been doing choir, I've been practicing voice lessons ever since high school going into college as well. Mm. So they'll also tell you, you know, you need to get your breath from your diaphragm, don't get it from your throat, you need right, to actually right. stand up straight, make sure your posture is good, make sure that the sound comes up and out and the resonation is in your face, okay. not in the back of your throat. Okay. You know, mm. like all this good stuff, I just roll it up into one big ball and try to implant it in my mind so I know it, I know everything from this to that to the third thing so I can have a good performance, so I mm -hmm. can have, you know, a, a great time awaiting my audience so I, you know, they can go home and say, wow, that girl, she's just, she's just a ball and she's just a blast and I would love to go, go back and listen to her sing one more time, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, in the walk of life and especially in the walk of you being a musician, you have to take step by step and learn this from that to the third thing and make sure that you take whatever somebody is giving you and take the lessons that whatever somebody is giving you and make sure that you keep that always in your mind. Okay. Like Mr. Heath here with the drums and you with the drums and any other type of instrument that you've been practicing within your high school and college years, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you engrave that. It's just like music theory. I couldn't stand music theory in high school <laughs> and in college. <laughs> God, <Okay>. no. <laughs> because if, if you lose, if you lose <clears throat> hold of it, 
then you won't know what to do for future reference. Like as far as the intervals are concerned, and 16th and 18th century counterpoint, and the notes and, and, and the staff, like baby stuff like that, that gradually leads you up to theories two, three, and four. Because mm -hmm. there were four levels that I had to go through when I was there at Elmhurst College. Mm -hmm. You know, just basically take everything, don't take everything with a grain of salt, make sure that you know the stuff that you need to know as far as being a good musician is concerned, as far as being a good singer is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I've been holding on to that thought ever since I was Jay High because my mom has pushed me mm -hmm. so hard. Okay. And like I said, I thank God for her. And if yep. it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be singing today. Great, so, great. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> well, Shaw University, um, was that a uh, known for a real music uh, production school or was? Actually, not at all. No? Not at all. Um, Shaw University is a um, religious school. It's a uh, Baptist institution. Oh, okay. And the way I got there, I was actually on my way to Southern University. And um, they offered me $500 scholarship. Southern is uh, Baton Rouge? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and they, they, they offered me $500 per semester mm -hmm. of scholarship. So um, I was happy that I was getting something. Okay. Um, but then uh, maybe two weeks before it was time for me to um, go away to uh, Southern, mm -hmm. um, the band director from Shaw University was recruiting uh -huh. in Chicago, and I was practicing in the band room at South Shore High School. Mm -hmm. um, he came in and he walked up to me and said, you sound great. I said, thank you. So he said, how would you like a full scholarship? I said, I would love a full a scholarship. A full scholarship. A right. full scholarship. And um, he said, well, this is my card. Have your parents call me because we're very interested in uh, recruiting you. We're in need, desperate need of a, a freshman drummer that can play. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to be with us for a while. So, uh, uh, needless to say, uh, I received a, a four-year scholarship to Shaw University, but it was funny because my uh, father, <laughs> we drove down to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, where Shaw is located, okay. and the whole time my, my father said, if, uh, if this recruiter is uh, pulling our leg, it's going to be some trouble because it's a long way from Chicago <laughs> that we're driving here. So we, we hope that this scholarship is, is true. And sure enough, um, he was a man of his word and another mentor of mine, uh, Mr. Charles Brown down at Shaw University in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Evidently, this is really an extraordinary experience playing for Ramsey Lewis. Not everyone mm. gets this opportunity, right? Not everybody gets the opportunity. And, and I mean, this was just an act of God to read the way you got it though, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe it. Um, Ramsey was looking for a new sound um, mm -hmm. and he's been in the game for a long time, real long time, mm -hmm. since the 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, the in yeah. crowd and, and uh, okay. all the hang on Sloopy and all those tunes that came out way before my time. Um, but when he called me, I was in the kitchen uh, washing a glass. And uh, I answered the <coughs> phone and I said, Charles Heath. And he says, wow, you sound so professional. <laughs> so I said, thank you. <coughs> but I didn't know who was on the phone at this time. So he just kept going on and on how professional I sounded. So by this time, I began to get a little irritated. <laughs> and I said, uh, how can I help you? He said, well, this is Ramsey Lewis. And the glass almost fell out of my hand. <laughs> right. So um, I, I began to tell him, no, it's not. No, it's not. This isn't Ramsey. This can't be Ramsey. So um, he said, Charles, this is Ramsey Lewis. So then I said, OK. So he asked if I uh, would be interested in joining his band. And I said, well, let me check my calendar and see what I'm doing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, um, I, I said I would love to join your band. And I've been working with them the past four years. and. We've been several places all over the world. Um, so many European tours, uh, worked and met, played with so many jazz greats such as Dee Dee Bridgewater, um, mm. uh, Philip Bailey, as I just mentioned, uh, shared the stage with Al Jarreau, Lionel Richie. Uh, the list goes on and on. Even shared the stage with Bill Cosby okay. and uh, met him. And mm. it, was, it was just, 
it's just one great experience after the next. There have been several opportunities that <clears throat> Ramsey Lewis had to play at Deerfield, um, the area there, uh, Ravenna. Oh, Ravenna, yeah, yes. Ravenna. And also, I think he played a couple of times here at Genesee Theater here in, That's uh, right. in, uh, in Waukegan. So, well, we hope that we can get him back here again with you. Absolutely. <coughs> yeah, so, I was uh, there the last time. We, oh, you were was, there? Yeah, it was great. Okay. Yeah, it was nice. And uh, this packed house, usually people just over, over thrilled to, uh, to see him come in. Absolutely. It's something about jazz. You mentioned that it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's offshoot from... Us, uh, spirituals, um, Negro spirituals, and then it uh, goes from that to uh, uh, blues. Then from the blues, uh, we we uh, have jazz, and then yeah. everything else that we hear today falls under the umbrella of jazz, blues, mm -hmm. and Negro spirituals, such as um, even the music of today, hip hop. Uh, before hip hop, uh, funk. Okay. Uh, before funk, we have uh, disco, and um, it just, it's all under the umbrella of mm -hmm. uh, the great music that we call jazz. Now you won't find it. We find it in uh, New Orleans because it's blues down there. Right? It's Absolutely. The blues, blues town. Absolutely. Well, New, New Orleans is one, is the birthplace of jazz. Birthplace? Okay. Yes. New Orleans is the birthplace of jazz. Uh, Louis Armstrong, who is considered the father of uh, jazz. Okay. Uh, okay. That's, that's where he's from. So, uh, you know, we, we owe a great debt to him. Uh, for his gift mm -hmm. for playing the trumpet and uh, just changing uh, the way we hear music, uh, jazz mm -hmm. music, uh, because he basically formulated, he was the formula that every, everyone pulled from uh, that, that uh, followed him. Mm -hmm. they, they pulled from the Louis Armstrong uh, form formula, and uh, Miles Davis said that that was one of his major uh, influence mm -hmm. when he was learning to play trumpet. Uh, he, he got a funnel and he poured some uh, Louis Armstrong, poured some Dizzy Gillespie in it, okay. and then okay. he poured himself in it, and that's how he got the Miles Davis sound that uh, you hear. And um, he's one of the most influential uh, uh, jazz musicians today. Even though he's not with us, he's still very, very popular right. when it comes to listening to jazz music. I remember in grade school, <coughs> uh, there's a group of uh, boys in the back of the room, you know, and the teacher uh, pointed out to one of the uh, students, what are the three B's in music? <laughs> in grade school now. Right. And he said, Bebop, Boogin, Blues. <laughs> 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 and see, what you were looking for was Braun, Beethoven, and... Right. Uh, uh, Give me the three. Bra uh, Bach, Bach, Bach right. Beethoven, and Braun. Yeah, right. yeah. I never forget that, you know. But uh, um, we have a... Our students should be more educated in, uh, in music, and I just hate to see it. Take it our, our school system here in North Chicago and ours considering uh, dropping the elementary um, um, music department, mm. you know. Mm. And I think it's very, very sad that they, they even consider it. But when they think of the budget, that's the first thing they think of. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Right, yeah. right, right. Mm. Well, what do you expect to be um, 10 years from now? Ten years from now, I expect to have my own music school uh, building, okay. my, my own property, uh, as well as my own jazz venue, uh, okay. just to give back to the community and uh, bridging the gap between uh, the music of yesterday and the music of today, just educating the, uh, the, the young people that are coming up in music and just educating the community, making them uh, aware. Ms. Butler, uh, you're a senior at... Um, Elmhurst College. Elmhurst College? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what do you expect to be... So i give you five years. I'm going to give you ten years, five years from now. Um, basically, wherever God takes me, um, I want to I wanna be a successful businesswoman within the world of music, okay. the world of entertainment. Like, I tell people this all the time. Like, I don't know exactly what I want my career to be, but I know for a fact that music business is a good way for me to start, you know, looking 
for for ideas of what I want to do. Maybe it, it could be something in publishing. It could be, you know, something in voiceovers. I may be the next black Disney princess, if you will. I would love to do that. <laughs> God, I would love to do that. Um, you know, just, just, just doing something to make this show itself pop, you know, um, to, to make it more, you know, to put more pizzazz and more oomph into it, you know, like mm -hmm. I want to be the one that's known, you know, to be behind the scenes and to make everything, you know, make, make the glamour pop out and make everything, you know, look more professional and look more presentable to the audience, you know. And um, like I said, uh, a frontline gig would be nice. I mean, everybody wants to be Beyonce, everybody wants to be Madonna, or everybody wants to be Jennifer Hudson. I mean, if, if that ever happens, God willing, hey, I'm still gonna take it by storm, but mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. for a fact that I at least don't want to walk into this business with a big old question mark above my head, like, okay, where's my money? Where'd you put it? God, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> well, you have a, a lot of support from this area. I know your, your mother and grandmother and so forth, and, and even uh, our expert drummer here and mm -hmm. so forth. Any, any way, I guess, you have to be the one to determine which way you want to go and you, you, you have the support. Yes. You know? That's right. Yeah, right, yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. Well, what about females in the um, music uh, music area? You, um, uh, there's still a lot of room? Absolutely. Um, actually, one of the recipients of the Ken Chaney Scholarship is a female. Ah. Uh, she's a pianist. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a junior at Whitney Young High School. Okay. In Chicago, studying um, actually with the uh, Ravinia um, Jazz Program, mm -hmm. so she's a member of that, and she's also studying with the great pianist Willie Pickens mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of room for female musicians, and uh, I, I mentor everybody. So it okay. doesn't matter the gender or age, uh, just as long as they can hear and see. <laughs> 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 Come on. You were in Chicago Public Schools for 10 years. 10 years. You evidently had a lot of challenging experiences then, right? I did, I did, uh, but not many. Uh, mm. I, I found the key is respect. Okay. And I go into the classroom not trying to be the student's friend, but be their teacher. Yeah, yeah. And, and once they see that, that I care about them, uh, and I respect them as a child, they then respect me as an adult. And I, I really had problems in the 10 years that I was teaching. I could count on one hand the number of times I had to send a uh, student to the office or something mm -hmm. uh, for disruption. Because most of the time when students are engaged, mm -hmm. you have no problems. Yeah, so right, exactly. So I, I kept them engaged uh, the whole time they were in my my class playing music and learning how to read music. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a great experience. I loved it. So we're watching the Color Purple and have no idea that Charles Heath the <laughs> Fourth <laughs> was, was in the background. And uh, that was, uh, next. oh yeah, uh, we have here on the screen here, uh, uh, you want to you enlighten us about that? Sure. Uh, we have Jazzin' on the South Side, Ken Chaney Scholarship Benefit Concert, uh, featuring the great vocalist Ms. Nina Freelon, mm -hmm. and that's going to take place uh, at DuSable Museum of African American uh, History, uh, June 1st, 2014, 3.30 p.m., and there's going to be a 6 p.m. show as well. Mm. Uh, the cost is $50, mm -hmm. uh, but keep in mind that it's two shows, it's not going to be 3.30 through 6 p.m., but there's a 3.30 p.m. show and a 6 p.m. show. Okay. And uh, for more information, you can call 773-981-3135. And uh, the, uh, the date on that is? June 1st. June 1st. This June 1st. Yes. That's, for your, uh, uh, that's the information on the card that we're looking for. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. This is fantastic. Well, I'm very happy that... Um, Gee whiz, you have shared a wealth of information, and also uh, uh, Whitney uh, Butler. Uh, uh, we can f we can locate her at uh, Christian Valley Missionary Baptist Church, yes, right? And you are uh, a yes, choir choir member there. Yes, I've been a choir at Mount Zion Baptist Church. I was baptized there at age nine, and I just 
remember going through school and singing in you know school choir and when I'm like oh God mom I miss I miss singing for the for God I, I miss singing for the the church choir okay so and we found Christian Valley not too long ago and I'm like you know what I need to get up there because I just miss that feeling of being you know being in the pulpit and having the preacher say his word of God and just and just move the people with that along with our song okay. so yeah that's another joy of mine that I just can't wait to get back into I mean I couldn't really do it because of school and how okay, it swamped right, me right. for the past you know a couple of months or so but uh, I thank God I'm back in there and uh, I'm ready to sing some more so bring it how up. How did you locate <laughs> uh, Elmer's College as a, <coughs> as a um, junior? Uh, oh, junior. Okay. Yeah, when I went into Elmhurst College, I was a junior. Okay. Um, I basically was walking down the, the hallway of CLC, do 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 and I seen one of those little, you know, sponsorship things or, you uh, know, the little old call or if you want to get more information type things where you rip off the wall and then you give them your information and you send it by mail. And uh, they sent me their information just like that. And um, before you know it, I was just, I was walking down the, the hallways and the byways of, of the of Elmhurst College. It's a beautiful campus. It's a, like I said, it's a Christian and liberal arts uh, private school. Okay. Um, I have a lot to offer. I mean, the teachers are very, very upfront and personal with the students. It's not like you're sitting in a big 50 to 60 student class and you see the classroom chairs going all the way up the, the wall and whatnot and it's hard for you to actually get the professor's attention when you need when you're probably one of the students in that class that need the most attention because you're the one that's struggling no you can literally just say hey let me talk to you after class mm -hmm. so um i love the one on one ship uh i love the fact that they have many um organizations for you to be a part of um we actually have our own black student union mm -hmm. um you know, of course, our sports, you know, we got the tennis team and the football team and the basketball team. That's a given as well. And uh, you know what? I'm going to miss it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. college has been a big part of my life since, you know, you know, uh, August, I believe, of 2011. Yeah. No, August of 2009. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I graduated from CLC with my associate's degree in the spring of 2011. Then that same year, I went over to Elmhurst, and that's kind of where I'm getting it switched <laughs> up. But, okay. yeah. Um yeah like i said by the grace of god i'm here and i can't wait to have that diploma sitting in my hand all wrapped in pretty and blue and gold <laughs> and just elmhurst college with my name right there at the front and that's, so, that will be yeah when will that be now um this saturday on the 31st um 10 yeah. o'clock um on the mall you know uh the mall is this big pretty field we have right behind the frick center and uh, hopefully if the weather is good Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> if the weather is good, it will be outside. But if it's not, eh, we got a little policy where it's three tickets per student that's graduating, and we're gonna pack everybody in Fagnall Hall. Very that's uh, the 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 physical education hall for the students. You know, more, mainly for the athletes and the people who want to be like trainers and whatnot, and right, as far right. as their their future careers are concerned. But he, what uh, did you mention that you were an only child too? No, actually, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say that I was uh, <laughs> kidding because I'm I'm an only child. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you mentioned you one of uh, three, one of okay. three. Uh, I have uh, a younger brother. Musician. And, uh, well, I actually taught him how to play the drums. Oh, okay. Right, taught him how to play the drums. So when he went to college, he would have a little pocket change okay. in his pocket. So um, he went to school and made a little living for himself, and came back to Chicago. And uh, now he's a pastor. Oh, right uh, sure. in Chicago. Uh, and my oldest sister, my only sister, who's uh, a couple years older than myself, um, she's an accountant. So, okay. Okay. Uh, but when we were coming up, I got blamed for everything because I was in the middle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Well, this is this is fantastic. Um, uh, you notice there's another great drummer at uh, Christian Valley Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, oh, and, uh, I've heard of her. Yes, yeah, she's, mm -hmm. of <laughs> she's great. <laughs> and you sing in a choir there too. You've you've heard of her too, right? Yes, she's very influential. Like I'll just be looking over there at the drummer section, like you better go ahead now. We feeling <laughs> the spirit today now. <laughs> and uh, you know, I've I've thought about it. You know, me being a musician myself, and it's I've been told timeless time timeless time and time again like you know Willie I know you're a vocalist but mm -hmm. if you have other instruments to back you up like piano and drums and anything else that you can possibly like pick up 
that'll help your singing. My first piano, uh, say, uh, Tara Singer at A Major Music in Gurney, Illinois, she told me that, you know, mm -hmm. and she's a great musician herself. She's been practicing since she was J High. And uh, I'm, that could be a possible instrument that I want to pick up too, and I would have to ask this one for help here, <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, anything that I can, I can pick up and anything that I can learn, I'm, I'm willing to do it, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, but singing is my first instrument. It's one of my first loves, and I couldn't let it go for anything. So, um, yeah. Mr. Heath, now, uh, being a percussionist, that's usually a backbone of the band then, I guess, right? Absolutely. Uh, the drummer makes the band sound good or bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, if, uh, if it's anybody's fault, it's the drummer's fault a lot of times, mm -hmm. even if it isn't. So, uh, yeah, definitely, drummer is the backbone of the band. Uh, if it's slowing down, it's the drummer's fault. If it's speeding up, right. it's the yeah. drummer's fault. Yeah, I found that yeah. when I was a bass drummer. It, uh, yeah. it really carried carries it there, you know. That's right. <clears throat> well, it, it's, a, it's a great honor to have you here being a world-renowned. Thank you, sir. You know, educator, um, musician, percussionist, uh, especially for the another world-renowned person, uh, Ramsey Lewis. Yes. You know, it's uh, that has been, there's no stranger to, uh, to to Lake County. Right. Yeah. Now, you're in uh, Lake County uh, quite a bit then, too. I am. I am. Back and forth. Mm -hmm. Back and forth. Uh, yeah, that's another thing, too. Uh, uh, playing with a band, you have to be able to travel. That's right. That's part of the the nomenclature there. It's, uh, Absolutely. Travel is a great thing. You can't travel. Uh, that's a singer, too. Singers and mm -hmm. whatever. Sure. Yeah. They may say, well, I I need you in Detroit here, or I need you in Louisiana, or I need you in New York, or whatever. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then, uh, if you're going to be successful, then you have to be able to to uh, go. Yeah, it's, it's one of the perks of being a musician, actually, uh, uh, having the opportunity to see the world and uh, places that to go places that you never would have dreamed that mm -hmm. you can go, mm -hmm. uh, such as Spain, uh, uh, Paris, Italy. Uh, the list Tokyo, the list goes on and on. Oh, even even overseas. To uh, get overseas, me. absolutely, right. definitely, definitely. Have drums, will travel. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have to wrap up a uh, <coughs> this this great show, and we could go on and on and on. We have a uh, Mr. Charles Heath the Fourth, uh, drummer, educator, producer, musician. And uh, he's a world-renowned educator and uh, percussionist for the great Ramsey Lewis. And also, we're very fortunate to have uh, Whitney Butler, a senior uh, at Elmhurst College. Uh, she's also a music business uh, major. And she shared her time to come and let other youngsters, she's a role model for other youngsters that may be interested in uh, definitely going to college. You notice that she got an associate degree at uh, College of Lake County and now she graduated from Amherst College. This has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks Sr., your host.